What's going on YouTube? Earth Power here with CVH and How's we're back going? with Sports Center. Kaijudo style. Kaijudo <laughs> style. So what are we bringing in today? Well, we pretty much got a summation of all the KMCs. Eight weeks total with the uh the break for the set premiere in between, so Indeed. No no KMCs happened on that weekend, but uh well we've got planned for you for the next however long. Yeah, we have no idea how long this is going to take, but I hope you enjoy. Yeah, what we've got planned for you is basically just coverage of every KMC and our, our thoughts on, I guess, how it evolved, seeing as how Clash was released uh, halfway through. So, I guess we're just going to get right into it with the uh Yeah, the, the first, first KMCs were May 4th. May 4th. And yeah. uh, there were three that weekend. One of them was in uh, Canada. And that was actually won by a surprising deck choice. It started out surprising us. Mono Dark took yeah. the whole thing. And how many people showed up to this uh, one? A bunch, right? Yeah, like 54 players. It was yeah. crazy. So Tyler went there, piloted Mono Darkness to a victory. Water Fire Rush topped. It was it was sort of strange because a lot of people were just expecting Water Darkness Light to just be the yeah. only deck playable. So, you know, you, also props to Andy Chris, a.k.a. Aiden Thorne. He, spo he did a whole compilation of all these deck lists on his articles. Be sure yeah, to go week, back on, week by week. You know, yeah, all three games. games. So, yeah, be sure to check that out. Another one happened in Georgia, which was actually really cool because our local player, yeah, Nate Bond, traveled all the way down there by himself to play in a 20-person uh, KMC down in, where, where was this at? Uh, Georgia. Uh, uh, the, the name of the store? You bring it up? You, did you not get that up? Oh, I'd get it up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Georgia. Basically, the first week it was in uh, Carlington, Georgia, or Carrollton, Car Carrollton, Georgia, at Quest Comic Shop. The one in... Uh, Canada was in Prince Rupert at Good Time Games and Electronics. Yeah. But uh, at Quest Comic Shop, our, our local player Nathan Bond played and uh, piloted Light Water Dark to to victory. Yeah, this is back when Dragon Control was the thing to play. You know, Cobalt had been phased out. Dragon Control was like the thing to do. Is is before like the times now. But actually, Cobalt still was played. Ricky Gross got second with it at uh, Georgia. Mm -hmm. In fact, Dark Saber Bolt was a pick. Actually, many people thought Dark Saber Bolt would do a lot better in these camp seasons, and yeah. it did. It only topped, like, a few times, you well, know? Well, it was looking good uh, towards the end of, like, Dragon Strike, but but once Clash came out, it was just kind of... Yeah, but these were, these were in Dragon said. Strike uh, meta, right? Yeah. Yeah, these were Dragon Strike. That's what I said. Dark Saber Bolt was, was, still looking, like, okay, was yeah. doing good in Dragon Strike, and then Clash just kind of phased it out completely. Yeah. Speaking right. of things that phased a lot of things out, the other KMC happened in Kentucky. <laughs> yeah, yeah right. this one kind of said everything yeah. on its own. Card Quest card Hobby Shop in Madisonville, Kentucky. Uh, Team SBK, a.k.a. Strictly Better Kaijudo, came out of the, uh, wherever it was, in their Facebook group or whatever, and invented Greed Dragons, which uh, flipped a lot of players' um, ideas about proper deck building, etc., on its head. Yeah. As you all know, Greed Dragons being the deck that is comprised only of finishers and shield blasts and Bottle of Wishes being a key player in that... But uh, Brian Durkin took it down, and three of his teammates comprised the top four with the same list, like two cards different apiece. Yeah, all, all from SVK. Ryan Valentino took fourth, Rob Walensky took third, and Steve Silverman took second with uh, his teammate, obviously, Brian Durkin. All running greed. Yeah, pretty crazy stuff. You all know the deck. I ran it in South Carolina. It's just, it, it was pretty crazy. Yeah, it still is pretty crazy. It's it yeah. still winning to this day, as a matter of fact. Actually, yeah, so we'll get to that yep. towards the end of this thing. So um, the following, uh, the following day. One. Yeah, the following day there was actually one in Comicus Island, Texas. It was pretty. It was a four KMC weekend. It was. It was nuts. Yeah, this was one we were actually planning on traveling to. This would have been our sixth had we actually gone. But yeah, uh, it was just too close to when school was ending. It was actually before we even got out, so we couldn't yeah. go. But uh, hey, look, Robert Esteroff got second piloting five Civ Dragons, not Greed Dragons. It was a much bigger version. They were running down in Texas, uh, but a lot of people were playing it. And Water Dark Light won that KMC as well, piloted by Joe Bass. And um, Robbie Wright got second. I mean, Bobby Wright got third. Robert Herbert got fourth. A lot of a lot of big names in the top eight, including Billy Brake running Dark Saber Bolt. So it was a, yeah. that that KMC was the closest, I think, to the meta, like what I thought the meta was going to be. Uh, right. Out of the first week, controls and a handful of five civ dragons. Yeah, you know, and the, like, I didn't even expect the five civ dragons for real. Like I expected light water dark, and I expected dark saber bolt to make more of a presence than it was. But overall, like that was the closest I think was Texas to what I was expecting. Right. Yeah. So. The following weekend, uh, this was our first KMC weekend, and myself and CVH actually traveled up to Wisconsin. Yep, we had uh, 24 players. 24, and I actually wound up taking second place with a light water dark control. No, not even splashing root traps. Nope, it was back when we thought we had the best build, and that was it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and actually, uh, Jared Doxtator winning with Light Water Dark Dragon Control. It was more of a dragon heavy build with Nixes. I opened our eyes to that, you know, the following weekend. You'll see me and Spencer adopt a similar strategy. 
But the top eight was composed by mostly, you know, you got some light water darks, water dark nature control deck, powered by David Carnes, very cool stuff. Shout out to David Carnes. Indeed. Super cool guy. A little bit of rush slipped in there too, obviously, is a trend that would continue yeah. for weeks to come. Forest. Yeah, yeah for went undefeated in Swiss actually, I yeah. think. Yes he did. Went undefeated with the fire rush. Yep, and the other, um, one of the other KMCs was a Bakersfield, California one with 45 players. Uh, Light Water Dark Dragon Control. Let's see how many times this actually won a lot. This was the yeah. first that I saw actually splashing three root traps. I think this was the first, uh, notice of that. Sam Gilbert took first, and 5 Sid Dragon Control, again, being insanely popular for... I was still surprised by it, actually. Yeah, I didn't, I still time. was doubting Greed Dragons, was doubting 5 Civ. <laughs> it's, it's just a very shiny deck. Like, I mean, it, it's alluring to a lot of players, especially when they realize, oh, hey, this can actually do well. Oh, yeah, and just the 5 Civ Dragons was as many huge. finishers as possible and put bottle in and hope for the best. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Surprising how well that works. And it did work very well for second place, third place, etc. And, of course, I was like, I was like the first notice of 3 root traps. It was 50 cards, and I was like, wow, that's rather large. Oh, they previewed Tritonus at this at this one too in Bakersfield. Yeah, pretty great. Kind of cool. So were those? No, there was one more in Winnipeg. Yeah, I don't think we're going to talk about that one. No, that was the only one that uh, uh, there was very little, if no coverage from it. We we knew there were six players there. There were six players. You can see the deck list on Kaiju.com, but yeah. honestly, and I don't mean any offense to the players. It really didn't have any bearing on the meta as a whole. Like I think Lightwater Dark did manage to take it. There's some interesting card choices, but it was nothing specific that, that stood it out from the rest of them, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nothing insane. Uh, fourth week had a... Uh, I don't even know how to say the name of that city. Pukipski. New York. Yes. And then as Dragons in Comics and Cards. All right, I guess we're just going to go into coverage for that real yeah. quick uh, as soon as I get to it. We also went to Asheville that weekend, so be sure to... the top, I think. You skipped. You just flew right by. That was Asheville. Was it? Yep, New York is this one. Okay. Excellent. It had 71 players. Greed Dragons won yet again. Another member of SPK, Tyler Hine. Yeah. Uh, cool guy. I guess. I don't know. I know his brother. So yeah. I'm just saying anything at this brother point. Brother to Zach Hine. Who is a cool guy, for sure. I know. I know. Yeah. Um, Tyler Hine won with Greed Dragons. Second and third place were both Light Water Dark Control. So. Charles to Aiden Thorne, yeah. third place. Yeah, Rafael Taveras got second. It says Light Water Dark Discard. I guess his build was uh, slightly different, you know? But uh, Light Water Fire also taking top spots, etc. Greed 53, first appearance of that. Mm -hmm. It was sort of a mixture of the 5 save Dragon Control and Greed. It was just like a Greed deck with a Nature Section and Ramp with Mana Storm to get up to crazy things like Skull Shattering, Kurgar, which is running threes. Yeah, so and this, this uh, is when uh, bigger decks really started to see play. This was right after Clash came out, so... Uh, Oh no, this was right before. It was right Asheville before, was right yeah. before. So, mm -hmm. like, people were starting to test with bigger decks, just realizing, hey, I can pack as many cards into a deck as possible and still not be too punished for it. Like, as long as they're all big. Yeah, I mean, and you can be punished by Rush, potentially, but a lot of people just started ignoring that deck. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, Asheville, North Carolina happened for myself, CVH, and Gorby, and Spencer, and Theo. Indeed. We all traveled down there. You can check out the video blog on my channel. Of course, let's go back a few videos. It was actually a really nice trip. I enjoyed that so much. Yeah, it was a nice trip. Yeah, it was my second KMC. I got ninth in Wisconsin, but I managed to top eight this one. Uh, Spencer and I went undefeated in Swiss, running an almost identical build of Light Water Dark Dragon Control, which was actually thanks to Jared that we changed a few things and added Nixes in. I thought that was a good move. Mm -hmm. Did super well all day. I managed to lose in top eight to the mirror match to Alex Len, who got second with this same deck, pretty much. Yep. And Spencer made top four and lost to Drew Bridges, who won with the same deck. It's interesting because I believe Spencer beat Drew Bridges in a uh, Swiss, same way as a. Uh, it's true. It's true. A lot of this, like the same thing. Going back to Wisconsin real quick, I actually I beat Jared in Swiss, and then he beats me in finals. I do believe he beat Alex Andrew in Swiss, so Spencer yeah. getting third. He was a little upset, but it was okay because the Alex and Drew are good players, good friends now. So that's cool. Also, Mono Dark surprised everyone again in the second week by top fouling this event right after it won last weekend in Canada. So Mono Dark still had merit before Clash. Not so much after Clash, but before Clash, it did top yeah. events. Medusa was still super cool. So. Yep, has some cool out. stuff indeed. The uh, um, last KMC. Well, there were two more. I well, oh, there were two more. There one, was one in Levensworth, Kansas, at Gators Video. This was the one that a lot of the uh, Texas players traveled to both. I believe this was the Kansas-Missouri trip, right? Um, I, yeah, because yeah. based on the top eight, a lot of Texas players in yeah. the uh, top. Yeah. You got uh, Ryan Bishop, who won it with 5 Civ Dragon Control, that deck still being super popular in that area. It's interesting to see, based on areas, like what decks they run. Like, East Coast is usually pretty standard control decks, 
And in like the Midwest, you got these weird like five sieve things that they were experimenting with that were turning out super well. Yeah. And Bobby Bragg actually got second. First notice of water, dark light, nature, dragon control with a nature section. I don't even know if it's specifically dragon control, but it ran like Andromedas and Liars, and it ran Ramp, yeah. which was a good move on his part. It definitely took him to top two, got his invite and all that. started noticing the, uh, the whole Mana Storm to Shatter idea in control. Yeah, Could it be a really thing. Yeah. And it does great in the mirror match, which apparently is like he faced a lot of dragons and a lot of uh, you know greed and control. So so he got him to top four. Also, or top two, rather. And Sammy Huda, Lepidos Dragon Control, top four. Interesting stuff there. And I think yeah, the last almost 20 people showed up to that one. There were uh, 20, there were 26 uh, Unknown, Nashville? actually. No one really knows. Uh, there was Wait, in Nashville, 20, there was 28. 28 in Nashville. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Prokeevsky had, uh, had the biggest count. 71, today. I think 71. that's actually still the biggest. Yeah. We, we gave him a run for its money twice, but uh, yeah. it was close. And then at least 25 players showed up the next day in Missouri. A lot of the same names in the top eight as the day before because they all traveled sort of as a group. And uh, Sammy Huda, who top four the day before at Lebedos Dragon Control, wound up winning this time. It was really interesting. I had I had my doubts. I was super doubtful. Not going to lie. Lebedos Control, I was like, I don't even want to watch his profile. Yeah. But it looked pretty good. You know, you can see Lebedos, it has some combos, you know, like if you, right, get, if yeah, you get things you off. Tap everything down. I mean, you just work control like normal and just drop Lepidos as a finisher and then... I mean, Orion or Stormspark come down and murder everything, and all of a sudden you've effectively turned Lepidos into a uh, just a shield screwing Negating. over machine. Yeah, especially since all of these decks like Greed Dragons and Five and Force of Dragon Control, they rely on a shield blast a lot. In the, especially in the mirror, they can just change the course of a game with a bottle of wishes, which was gaining popularity. So Lepidos, like you can bottle my own things out, but I'm not going to worry about your bottles at all in shields. Like this is not going to happen. So if that's if it's allowed to happen, the game is pretty much over. Mm -hmm. Robbie Stort actually topped his third KMC in a row and got second place with Force of Control. A super deserved top there. Yeah, got his invite. Shout out to him. Ryan Bishop took third after uh, winning the the day after the, the day, day before. before yeah. in, uh, in Kansas. Consistency yeah. comes from Texas, apparently. Oh, Mono Dark topping again. <laughs> what yeah, is with this? I, top four, right? Oh, twice! Mono Dark took two of the top eight spots here. Mono Dark is just was sort of relevant for a time. Yeah. It and it's something we don't really notice. Eric Ariel on topped back to back as well. And shout outs to OAC Stovall for topping with a uh, Fire Nature Rush. Yeah, I think this is the only sighting of Fire Nature Rush so far at the KMCs. Which was pretty awesome. Yeah, the uh the fourth set. Or no, this is the uh yeah, yeah this it's is the fourth, fourth set now. you got uh South Carolina, Jacksonville, Florida, and Mount Gilead. I'm saying that wrong. Ohio. Ohio. Yep. And uh we're gonna start with Jacksonville, Florida, because that's the first thing I have up. Cool. And that scared a lot of people. Post-clash, we were all thinking control is still the way to go, greed is still the way to go, and tell them what happened, Carl. Oh, God, two mono red rushes, just uh, the four, actually, or three, top four. Just so many. Like, it's three, it's, yeah, three too many for the, most people. Yeah, too much. I can't even get the number right because there's just too many. Like, it's too many to count. But yeah, mono rush wound up taking the whole thing. Patrick Van Landingen. And Van Landingen. Van Landingen. I actually don't know. Okay. Well, he, he won the whole thing with Mono Red Rush and uh, beat out second place. Uh, Juvon, right? Maybe I'm saying that right? Juvon? I don't know. But Juvon? he, with Patrick, Mono Red Rush. had some oh. insight because looking at his deck list, which I conveniently have right here, he anticipated the mirror match because he anticipated, yeah. like, we didn't think Rush would be a thing, but he was like, not only is Rush a thing, but I'm going to face some of it. So I'm going to include three Barrage and three Tornado Flames to deal with the mirror. Yeah. And looks like it paid off for him. Um, because that's yeah, crazy. Yeah, four, three out of the top four were uh, all mono red rush. Yeah, out of so. thirty-five players, two mono fire decks, or three in top eight and two in top two, is more consistency than I think a lot of players would give the deck merit for. And it definitely, like instant inclusion if you're testing, you got to test against rush now because yeah. people are going to do that. Because travel up the east coast a little ways, and you have uh, myself and the team running uh, whitewater dark controls and. Southbridge, or not Southbridge. South Carolina. South Carolina. Parksville, yeah, South, Parksville Carolina. South Carolina. That's Forty probably people. gaming. Yeah, cool KMC. I enjoyed myself immensely. 40 people showed up. This was actually the uh, most meta of the top eights. Or like, the most I explained. It was just... Yeah. What do we have here? We have four Light Water Dark Control decks, three Greed Dragon decks, and a Light Water Dark Nature Aggro deck in the top eight. 
Yeah. I went with Greed Dragons. It was post Clash, and I was super hype on the deck. Got three emulators. It was go time. So yeah. I went undefeated in Swiss. Super, yeah, super amazing performance all the way through Swiss. Well, thank you, Carl. Me and Spencer went undefeated in Swiss yet again. We were super hyped on that. I wound up losing in top eight to the mirror match. Lost to Jeff Gray, who again got second on consistently. We losing to these players in North Carolina who get second place <laughs> in the mirror match. But <laughs> shout out to Spencer Swan taking the entire event with went undefeated. Light water he went like. Uh, five, eight, zero, and one was his final record with one draw to me. It was just yeah. such a good performance from him. And this defined the meta because Andy yeah. Chris told me about Tritonus. I told him about Tritonus. He included one Tritonus. And, and it put in the work all day long. He like said it was the, the best card in the deck. Yeah, if he could have been running more, he would have put him in immediately after the first couple of rounds. Yeah, so if you're wondering yeah. why it's a $50 card now, it's because it started at like twenty five thirty, and then people started winning with it. <laughs> yeah, it's just, the card is nuts, guys. I mean, and, and I felt bad, because at first I was just like, oh, yeah, a card that draws a whole bunch, woo. I thought it was straight up bad. Yeah, never, never just, uh, I mean, analyzing, wow, that, that actually is a plus... A plus five. five, plus however much more when you start locking stuff down. The card it's is nuts, giant. Guys. It beats over everything. It's huge. Because what's the biggest deal about emulator? Who really cares? You I know emulator just, is just like okay. you can tear pit that, and then you still get the pl like the opponent gets the plus. Like what? What's you always on? have to base these cards on how they go how good they are when you top deck them. If you top deck an emulator and you have nothing else, and they slot five fields, they get rid of it. They draw three cards. You top deck a Tritonus, and the game is over. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's nuts, guys. So yeah. Tritonus really, really took definition after this round of KMCs. Yeah, it was but we, really had, cool. we had one more. We did, as a matter of fact, and this was the other one where Tritonis saw a ton of play. Uh, yeah. Mount Gilead, Ohio. Yep. Uh, am I doing these in the right order? Yes, I yes. am, because there's a lot of comments. Yep. <laughs> so what we have here is Andy Chris, a.k.a. Aiden Thorne. 60 players. 60 players, that's a lot. Yeah. Andy Chris and his teammate, Brian Anderson, went undefeated all day throughout Swiss. I guess they drew with each other once and then mm -hmm. took down the entire top eight with their version of Water Dark Light Control called Keeper Control, uh, featuring three Keeper of Dawns, three Keeper of Laws. And yeah, uh, two like, Tritonus, I believe. Two Tritonus apiece. And they were running Squillus as well. This is when I... I think one Squillus, perhaps. Squillus, yeah. Yeah, they weren't running the nature section, but it would definitely open people's eyes to like a bunch of finishers, a lot of cards. They were running like 54 cards. Yeah, huge decks. Again, yeah. starting to take notice now that, that the big decks are the way to go. Deck out was actually turning out to be a, a win condition, so a lot of these control players were having to make their decks bigger to combat the control mayor. Especially decks like this, because they ran Logos, Spy Mission, Tritonus, etc. Laws. Yeah. Laws. Laws killed Keeper everything. Laws. Yeah, nuts, guys. This card is so nuts. I mean, it, I felt bad because I did a preview on this card so long ago, and I, I feel like I, I just did not do it justice. Did not give the card enough. Not quite. You, you mentioned yeah. some good things. It has great applications in aggro, but it makes but the mirror match just in we, your favor. Yeah, we had no idea how good this card was going to be in the control decks. Like against other control decks. It's just infinite pluses, and you summon one and the game's pretty much over. You summon two and people start crying. You summon yeah. three, which I did like twice, and, and it's just and the game's so, over. so sad. <laughs> yeah, it's almost impossible to come back, and, and Aiden Thorne and Brian Anderson definitely brought this to light when they both just took Ohio by storm. Yep, and the rest of the top eight included some Greed Dragons, some more Light Water Dark, a on a Fire Rush deck. You can always expect one of them in top eight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's something you always one have to worry about. To squeak in. Yep. Oh, the fifth round. Looks like we had something in Colorado. Oh, this one is interesting. I is love this. Is this the sixth round or the fifth round now? This is the uh, fifth. Yes, it is. We have yeah. Colorado, Minnesota, and Southbridge, Massachusetts was on that Sunday. Yes. Starting off with Colorado, why don't you tell the people what happened? Colorado, well, they had 32 people. Indeed. And a very, very innovative deck brought to you by none other than Preston Brimage, a.k.a. Denver Kajudo called Leap of Faith, which is pretty much a light water nature aggro build with memory swarms, Lyros, I think he ran two Starlight uh, strategists. Look at the deck list. And yeah, yeah <laughs> there, two, go. there it is, two Starlight strategists, only two laws, which... Um, he probably would have upped yeah, that up to he three. He probably would have three had he realized. Finbar, which was uh, the new bounce card that came out of the structure decks. Here's something, he recognized and, that Logo Scan was not as necessary in aggro anymore. As people had thought, like he was at, he was probably building his deck of 38 cards, didn't feel the need to max anything else out, and just decided to add two logo scans just to yeah. bring it up to 40. And that really opened people's eyes to the fact that logo scan really isn't a card in itself; it just gets you to other cards. Yep, yep. Keeper of Laws at this point effectively can be an infinite logo scan. So especially yeah. with Seneschal, I mean, like you can go Seneschal Laws and just do insane things, and then drop Finbar and just continue to draw, which is which is nuts. These aggro decks were really, really helped out a lot by Finbar and Keeper of Laws mm. and. 
Preston noticed that, put something together that uh, just abused all of those, and, and took this KMC. And there's some great progression in this deck, too, because it has Essence Self to combo with Star Seed. You can go Essence Self, Sword, Horn, Star Seed, and just start double breaking. You can do the you can do the Keeper of Laws plays. You can do the Seneschal plays. It's just really cool. Yeah. Two Memory Keepers for the anti-rush tech. Right. Right. The card was announced. Yeah. So, there is one other sad story, yes. and I'm quoting Andy Chris on this because it's kind of true. Duel with Minnesota, uh, there was only 11 players there. We did have a friend there, Jared Oxtater, who you yes. might remember, remember from From the Savage Wisconsin. beating he gave me in Wisconsin. Tears. <laughs> <laughs> and the Savage uh, out tie-breaking me he did in Wisconsin as well. Right. But apparently this was his teammate who won the 11-person KMC in Wisconsin, not Wisconsin, in Minnesota. Robert Arguelles. That's not the right pronunciation. He ran Light Water Dark Control, and he took first place. Keeper Control, which is again Light Water Dark, took second. Dark Saber Bolt, Fire Water Light Dragons made up the rest of the top four. So, you know, again, not really surprising there. Yeah, but still very meta for being 11, 11 players. So we entered the KMC arena yet again this weekend. Yes. Massachusetts. You can talk to them about it. <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. Oh, <laughs> I, I feel bad. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you guys why CBH doesn't want to talk about it in a second. But uh, Southbridge, Massachusetts, this was the closest we got to beating Pukipski. I think Pukipski was the biggest at 71. We had 69 players show up in Southbridge, Massachusetts. Which is hilarious. At, uh, what, what, what was the car shop's name? Because we actually had to play in a high school because we had so many people that yeah, couldn't support this, us. If your shop is going to have a KMC and you're worried about a giant amount of people, do what LJ Sports Cards did. And rent a high school. Or rent a, a library, <laughs> or perhaps. Or rent a library, which we'll get to as well. Or like a bowling alley. I don't know. Yeah, just somewhere where all these players can play. But uh, we had 69 people. It was a super fun event. We met Drizzer finally in person. Uh, got to meet back up with Paul Clark, who actually wound up taking second at this event with Greed Dragons. He copied my list, but changed a few things for the better, <laughs> including yeah. a second Dreadclaw. And uh, shout-outs to Vu Win, because Vu Win won with Keeper Control. Vu won? Vu won. Vu Win. Vu Win won. Vu won. Yes. Okay. Yeah, Vu Win won with Keeper Control. Um, pretty much Aiden Thorne's build. But they had improved it because they were teammates yes. now. Yes. It was huge. I played yeah. it round three. I was one and one. I was not ready to get savagely beaten down by a 57 card deck. I took one look at it. It was double sleeved and it was 57 cards. I was like, I'm not power shuffling this. Are you running Rush? <laughs> <laughs> That's what, I, it was crazy. I barely got to cut it. <laughs> and I just, there's so many Tritonus. There was three Tritonus in there. First notice of three Tritonuses. So many Tritonus. Yeah. It, it was, wasn't even close. And it was crazy because uh, he could just summon Tritonus after Tritonus, continue to draw five and just not be punished for it. Again, these decks are being run big because deck out it is very much... At 40 cards, if you're running three Tritonus, that's... You're not running three that's, Tritonus. Exactly. That's over a fourth of your deck and you're going to deck out. Like, yeah, and like, <laughs> sure, you can only run more Tritonus, but that decreases the consistency of the card. Like, why not just dedicate your deck to cards like that? Yeah. And that's what Vu, won, Vu Win did and Vu Win won because Vu Win was smart, damn it. <laughs> and uh, I actually played against... Uh, I did make top eight and I played against Miguel Cepeda. There's actually an E in that name, and I don't know. Aiden Thorne must have missed that. Shoutouts to a, yeah. Shoutouts to a mistypings. But he was also but running Miguel Greed, right? ran Greed Dragons, and I played against it in Top 8. That matches on this channel as well, on my channel. Uh, go check that out. And I uh, took the most savage of beatings and finished in 6th place. So, But my second top, so pretty proud of that. Yeah, indeed. You know, I had my second. Carl had his second. Oh, and uh, shoutouts to Matt Robinson, who took Hold up. I, I want to notice, you know, yeah. like everything in this Top 8 is either Light Water Dark Control or Greed Dragon Control. Except for Matt Robinson, who was pretty innovative here. Yeah. Actually, a lot of people from SBK were here and were innovative as well, but Matt Robinson took the idea all the way to third place. Light, water, dark nature. Real nature section. Yeah. Matt Robinson, Full metal for those of you who don't know, is Kaijudo Scope on Twitter and YouTube. Yep, really cool deck. I opened my eyes to the strategy in general. Uh, just full metal lemon and these ramp spells is getting up to these, uh, it's in the control mirror, because, like, if you're both top decking, you can just get to Tritonus faster, Skull Shatter faster, just yeah, so and much you can cool ramp up into ramp up into Shatter faster, which is crucial. Oh, it really is. Yeah. yeah. But overall, this, again, was a tournament, besides the fact that Keeper Control was getting out of hand with his card counts, yeah. very close to what I expected. A lot of Light Water Dark, a lot of Greed Dragons. So, very cool stuff, you know. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, bigger decks, and it was just wild. Like, and it, the event was a lot of fun, too. Like I said, we got to meet Drizzer and uh, wound up adding him to the team the following week. So, yeah, you know. And shout out to Vu Win because of his win, uh, Team Gates brought him on. Yeah, so, yeah. Super cool stuff there. So, right, so the sixth week? The following week. Sixth week. We had Anderson, Indiana, Manteca, California, and Victoria, British Columbia. So, 
Let's see what let's see what happened there. Indiana. Okay, tell the people what happened in Indiana. Well, there were 33 players in Indiana, and light water dark control. I don't. I'm I'm, I'm done keeping count. I don't even know where you're at. Light water. It was, it's a lot. Like light water dark has taken the majority of these KMCs to, at this point. I mean, even from last meta, like the the pre clash right. meta. If like, these were pre Dragon Strike and Furnace, you would have seen Blurple with this many wins. But yeah. you know, light water dark has just been the consistent control choice. And it's funny too, because thinking back. Go back four months when we were still like early DSIs and kind of like post Evo. We were like, when these KMCs roll around, Blurple's going to be the go-to deck. Then we and, tested and Lyra and Andromeda. Not a single Blurple has topped so far. Maybe one? One or two have topped? But yeah. none that I've noticed in this run three so far. Lyra and Andromeda and then now Clash cards have just... Well, Clash, you know, Finbar sort of helped the deck, but people were still running Lightwater Dark because it's just so consistent, you know? Yeah. Uh, ben Rowe won with Lightwater Dark Control, a good player there. Lightwater Nature Aggro, similar to Preston's deck that he won the previous week in Colorado with. Uh, yeah. So that legitimized it. A lot of people that I was talking to were doubting the legitimacy of it. They're like, oh, I just got lucky. But this yeah. deck, it was even a budget version. It didn't even have like all the things that Preston yeah. did, and it still took second place. To, to go back, I mean, to just aggro decks in general, just starting to see a surgence, like in, in the meta, people realized that, hey, or people were starting to realize at this point, you know, Bottle is a card, and that may have scared me with aggro, but if I just go in and they don't have Bottle, what are they going to do? It's true. So people just started running those odds, and it started paying off. All of a sudden, like, people realized, hey, Rusaka shuts down Greed. So and it's just... important, like, this Keeper Control deck is shutting down Greed for them, and, yeah. like, Keeper Control doesn't run Bottle, so against these Keeper Control decks, if it gets any of those progressions off that I mentioned when I was talking about Preston's deck, like, Control is on the back foot. Yeah. It's a problem. And it's very noticeable coming up in the KMCs that we'll uh, we'll get to in a second. And I mean, even going back to Southbridge, I ran a, uh, uh, I guess a very stock version of Fire Nature or Water with a uh, Tetsurama Champions and big finishers, but Finbar and Rusalkas, and those they just put in the work all day long. I only mm -hmm. lost one. I mean, I, I I helped Spencer out when we when we faced each other in Swiss, but uh, I I only lost one legitimate match to Rush. And it was even then super close. So, I mean, these, these aggro decks definitely have what it takes to top, and, and we're starting to see that now. Uh, a trend, if you will. If you can Preston's main... Top. Like, the decks like Greed Dragons that build up to big threats, we're seeing less play because people are running Tritonus and just, like, over-advantaging and over-threading them. Mm -hmm. But decks that can main tem maintain tempo, like Water, Fire, Nature, Water, like, Nature, Light, if they get good progressions, mm -hmm. if they can maintain tempo, like, that is what you need especially, against Control. Especially because these decks could win by, like, turn 7 or 8, and uh, turn 9 is the crucial turn for Control in these Greed Dragon decks, and if you can beat them before they get to their Andromeda... And, and even so, if you can beat them the turn after they drop Andromeda by bouncing it or just root trapping it or something like that, like, mm -hmm. you, you're pretty much good to go. So, yeah, you know, stuff. that being said, Mono Fire Rush still saw play because people still bet that on the early game. You know, not a bad call for sure. Keeper Control taking more spots. One Light Water Dark Nature Control by Sean McCabe in top eight. Yep. Cool stuff. What else happened, happened this week? Well, Manteca, California happened. California, West Coast. Shoutouts to Mono Fire Rush. Took three more spots out of the top four and winning the whole thing was Zachary Merman with the rush. Took second place to a light water dark bottle tempo, which was a uh, which was yeah, probably a very took interesting. First match. place to the light water dark. Took first place, yeah. I gotta tell you, I felt really bad for everyone here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I mean look at look at the remain oh god, there was another mono fire that took seven. Yeah, I mean there were two the top eight. controls that just like lost out in top eight, I assume, to the mono fire. Something like that. Yeah, like and, and a Dark Saber Bolt and squeaked in as well. But Dark Saber Bolt's like, I can't mono stop. <laughs> <laughs> like look at the top four, it's all mono fires and yeah, a deck four. that's named with bottle in the name, like Dark Saber Bolt's not having a good time in top eight. <laughs> no, not at all. And I mean mono fire taking four out of the top eight spots is still definitely proving that this deck when running Big numbers can can do very well. Like I mean, mm -hmm. it's it's just a tough deck to deal with when dealt with consistently because it's such a coin flip for control a lot of the time. Yeah, and of course this guy was running barrage twenty to to deal with the mirror match. Who won? Yes. Good calls there. So good meta calls all the way around. So uh, last KMC was in British Columbia, Victoria, British Columbia. That is twenty six players. Uh, one by a duck hit. Oh my god, it's still modifiers in this this top eight. It's just there. Yeah. Water fire, water dark fire, dragon control called Boomfield by Damon Caron won. And it was pretty interesting because I didn't expect Water, Fire, Dark Dragons to win, but, you know, they did. It was, a, you know, it was pretty cool. You know, it has Umbras, Nixes, Bottle of Wishes, and a bunch of dragons. It yeah, took a page out of Greed, but not even really because it can do things earlier. 
Yeah, the deck was running a lot of very interesting tech choices. Overcharge, Grudge Weavers. Grudge Weavers shuts yeah. down Rush, let me tell you. Yeah, it does. Especially because yeah. you get followed up with Mesmerize. It's just, the game is almost yeah. over. And then you just drop Infernus and kill something and drop lots of big dragons. Mm-hmm. And he has a lot of Shield Blast 2, 3, Dragon's Breath. <laughs> 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 the Alter Reality Games article is looking to the Magic the Gathering version of Dragon's Breath. But Yay. he ran the Kaijudo card, I promise. Yeah. Either that or it's the best meta call of all time. Uh, Keeper Control takes second. Mono Fire and Mono Dark take third and fourth. Um, Mono Dark, I didn't even realize it topped after Clash came out, but uh, apparently it did. You know, yeah, props to you. Shout out to West Coast. Um, yeah, Mono Fire, Green Dragons, Keeper Control, Light Fire, Nature Aggro. Pretty cool top eight, you know. Yeah, it didn't have a massive of Light Water Dark Control, which, you know, yeah, is kind of refreshing. Like yeah. yeah. So not bad. And then, uh, Seventh, seventh week. Set. Only one KMC this time, but it was a pretty. It was a cool one. It was. It was definitely cool. It was held in uh, Las Vegas, Las Vegas, Nevada, right next to the biggest trading card game tournament of all time, which was that Grand Prix for Magic. You know, yeah, so, that was it was nuts. Brought in uh, how many people showed up? this on twenty six. Yeah, and Stephen Liberto wound up taking the entire thing with a uh, Dominus Death Control, aka Keeper of Dragons. Got a list right here. Basically, forces Water Dark Firelight with a. Uh, just it was huge. It was a sixty card deck, ran a ton of draw power and just a ton of like the big fire finishers like Immolator, Awakened, uh some fast attackers, uh the standard dark stuff, a dread claw to get them all back, and just like the the standard light section with three keeper of laws. Uh, only two Andromedas and three Lyras, so and you got another mindset here was Light Water Dark is a great base and it's winning a lot against a lot of decks, but in the mirror match, Keeper of Laws is making my spells useless. I'm going to play a lot of big creatures that they can't deal with. So yep. and and it, it went really well for him obviously. Yeah. Keeper control got second and lost to it. And then um you, know, you see more keeper control, water firelight shout outs to uh, Nima H with Fire Nature Light Megabugs wound up going completely undefeated through Swiss and then uh losing out in top four. But uh, finished third, which is super cool. Yeah, actually, this is not the first time we've seen that deck. Well, it's the first time in top eight, but, you know, it started to see play in Massachusetts, I saw. You know, yeah, people it were started to see, that. and uh, myself and Gorby actually wound up uh, drumming up deck lists for it right after Massachusetts, and we put a deck together, and I actually swept locals with it, and then to hear that the Fire Nature Light version of Mega Bugs took third place and went undefeated in Swiss at uh, Las Vegas was reassuring and definitely uh, decided it for me that I was going to run this the following weekend. Also, Blurple in the top four. Hey, look, it did it. There's a Blurple. It did it. I, I think the build was actually... How to George Ashi? A lot of people were saying in a more tempo build, like just Cyberlords with some dark for backup, but I think this build actually ran Medusas and stuff, which is pretty mm -hmm. cool. Throwback to the Evo Fury meta that I personally really enjoyed. Yeah, which, I mean, showing you guys that, like, innovation, like, bringing stuff that people aren't prepared for can generally, like, work. I mean, when, when no one's prepared to get Medusa'd... What does that card do? <laughs> yeah, exactly. All of a sudden, you're in the best position because you've got the opponent just kind of thinking they don't know what's going on, and that puts you in just a great, a great way. Yep. Speaking of modifier rush, it's all done. <laughs> <There's>, <laughs> we weren't even talking about it, but we were all thinking about it. Where's yeah. the modifier rush deck? Oh, it's, thank God, it one topped. <laughs> I thought there was going to be a problem. So now, finally, the uh, the eighth and final weekend of KMCs. My had... favorite weekend. Every weekend we had Oakmont, Pennsylvania at Mr. Nice Guy Games, which myself and CVH attended, as well as the majority of SBK and uh, let's talk about the other two games, Matt Robinson and all that. And then uh, Tyler, Texas happened at the Castle, and Orangeville, Ontario, which Drizzer and Kajudo Channel, aka Corey, attended at Coros Games. So let's uh, let's talk about Tyler real quick. Sure. So apparently uh, a man named Gator. I don't know what his last name was. It's but... somewhere. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. Your name is Gator. I don't Gator. think people are going to get you confused with anyone else. <laughs> they had, I think they had 54 people show up to this event, and Gator wound up taking the entire thing with Greed Dragons. Interesting stuff seeing Versus Greed Dragons, because it had fallen off. If you didn't you know, notice the past few weeks, people weren't running it. People were gravitating towards Keeper, even Waterbark Farley. They were like, I'm staying away from Greed. It's too one-sided. I mean, even though Paul, Paul did take second place at Massachusetts with Greed. But, yeah, yeah, but Massachusetts, that, but like, it, besides that. It, 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 it had seen like a, one or two top eight performances, but not very many. People were like, Tempo, Keeper, my Greed Dragon deck is way too top-heavy. I'm going yeah. to do something more consistent. Exactly. But yeah. it was consistent enough for Texas. So yeah, Greed wound up taking it. it. And uh, Water Dark Light, Splash Root Traps, took second place shout outs to shout outs to i know his name hold on you're gonna have to edit this to brandon f seroff nope. for his i wound up top topping this one with uh with water dark light splash root traps yeah pretty and cool then, stuff uh, orangeville ontario happened orangeville, uh, also ontario. apparently in texas there was 
I don't know if much mono red rush topped. I do think it probably did. But the, like, people were saying it was like 20% of everything that was being played was mono fire rush. There was just like a mass amount of rush decks and like a solid amount of complaining to go with those rush decks on Facebook. Like, people were not excited that they had to play a lot of mono fire rush decks. No, no one was that big. Um, uh, yeah, speaking but, uh, of a uh, mono fire, we got Canada in Orangeville, Ontario. Yeah, Our teammate to, Dave Pendergrass. Shout outs to Drizzer. Went, began his tournament experience after joining Team Peach with, at 0 and 2, losing to two mono fire rushes back to back. Which, which was but, not reassuring for me because we were running an exact copy of the same <laughs> deck. I think one card different, maybe. But he actually did happen to win out, go 3 and 2, and finish in 11th place. So, so not a bad showing, but just some bad luck in the beginning there. Yeah, because the deck does have, especially the way he was running it, did have rush answers, and like it just, it, from what I heard, it just did not pan out for him. But it does happen. That's how people bet on mono fire rush. And sometimes it just has to pan out like that, you know? Apparently Vu was also at the one we were at, the guy who won uh, Massachusetts, and he did lose to Mono Fire Rush in the first two rounds as well. So if you're running a top-heavy control deck, it's something to keep in consideration. You have to either ignore it as a matchup and potential, or prepare for it in some sort of way. It's sort of hard to do, but it's there, and it's probably there to stay. Yeah, but uh, the, the final decks that... Uh uh, the decks that won in Orangeville, Ontario, first place was Andrej with Greed of Loss. Basically, Greed Dragons with Keeper of Loss to combat the control mirror. I said that. The control mirror. I was going to try that, and we never got around to testing it, but that's super cool that it did well. Yeah, it won. And then uh, second place was Kin with Starseed Smashers, as it were. Basically, oh, uh, that's Preston's sort of thing, right? Yeah, basically Preston's deck, but uh, with just... Yeah, basically Preston's deck. See, Starkey Squadron is just too long of a name. You're just going to keep calling it Preston's deck forever. <laughs> if it's like Water Nature Tempo, it's just there. And apparently teching out uh, Return to Soils to uh, get Good in call. and get that early work in. In case Keep of Loss comes down, you just get rid of it real quick and not yeah. have to worry about it. So. And you don't want to give Rush to Mana, but sometimes you just have to get rid of that laser arm before it just wins. Yeah. If you don't have Sword Horn, yeah, that if is. If you don't have Sword Horn, you need the Blast, and, and Return to Soils helps there, so... Definitely good meta choices there. And shout-outs to Andrej and Ken for uh, taking first and second. And shout-outs to Corey. He got a uh, fourth place. Yeah, or the got, Judo channel. Yeah, got third place, I believe, at this one. After tiebreaker. Yeah, definitely top four with his third. teammate, A.H. Shadow, Alexander Sam Hughes. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. And cool stuff. He was running Water Dark Light Nature, and I don't know what Alexander was running. Something probably similar. I don't know. Yeah. Oakmont. Yeah. Oakmont, Pennsylvania. Myself and CVH walked through the doors as nobodies. And left. Well, champions. we didn't walk through as nobodies. Oh, no. <laughs> it's actually. Did I sign anyone's? I don't know. I probably signed someone something. I don't. I didn't really sign a lot of stuff. So, but um, we were there. We decided to go. Just the two of us, like we did for Wisconsin to start out with. We went into Wisconsin. We were like, got in my truck, started the drive at twelve, stopped off at Spencer's around five or six in the midst of DC rush hour. Drove on the wrong side of the road for a little while. Got to Spencer's, hung out with him. But for it three was hours. the right side of the road too, in a way. Also, yeah. But yeah. Uh, yeah, we left Spencer's. It was a beautiful ride down and sunset in Pennsylvania, and then uh, we got there at midnight and got some sleep and showed up to the tournament and met up with Matt Robinson, Kaijudoscope, Kaijudoscope, Jeff uh, Lang, um, Jerry Thompson. He's a cool yeah, guy. Jerry Thompson, Mark Wooden, Mark aka Roger Koo. Check his channel out for coverage. You already know. Yep. And it was just uh, super fun. But, uh, Sixty-three players. Showed six, up. Yes. Yeah, one person under what would have been a seven round tournament. We yeah. played six rounds, sixty three people, which means an X one and one. X one and one would have to hope for a lot of miracles. Yeah, we'd have to hope for the best tiebreakers. But uh my season CVH. How did we do? Completely undefeated. Ugh. All the way up through finals. Yes we did. High five. High five. Okay. That was good enough. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they didn't they didn't see it. <laughs> and uh I actually wound up winning the entire thing with Megabugs. Beat CBH and for finals. the title in like a very brutal 2 0 sort of fashion. It yes. was sort of depressing. But I 2 0 everyone except for a Dark Saber Bowl player, which I 2 1 running Water Dark Like Nature, which I finally saw the popularity we were all expecting. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't just a one of this time, it took like four spots in the top eight. The yeah. two other two control spots were both Light Water Darks, one of them splashing Root Traps, one of them was Jerry Thompson who ran Neptus and Keeper of Laws and only like 45 cards to sort of get under the mirror, as it were, because, you know, good matchups in the mirror, but yeah. weak matchups to things like Mega Bugs, which he lost yeah. to in top eight. Against myself. Yeah, yeah, and then the last two decks in top eight were Carl with Mega Bugs, like Light Water Nature, check out Rajin for the deck profile. Brian Durkin and running a... Uh, Fire Nature Light. Kind sort of homebrew deck, just something yeah. different. 
Yeah. Yeah, something that was aggressive Wanda that could just do quick regressions. Completely through Swiss as well. So. Yeah, four zero and two. We all decided to double draw going into top uh, top eight. Top eight because yeah. it guaranteed us their spots in. So might as well. But it was really good stuff. You know, great experience. I'm so glad I got my invite. <laughs> yeah, like I said, you you ran it and uh, got it at the very last minute possible. So yeah, a couple fifth you. place finishes later, and I was sort of worried. <laughs> yeah, but uh, and we're in that sort of elite group of three top eights a piece. Yeah, <laughs> I don't yeah. know how many. A lot of people do have that. Robbie Stewart, I believe, has that. Bobby Brake might have that. A few people have that. But it's just cool to you know have that consistency. And it's really cool because you go through these lists and you can check out Andy Chris's list to like look at these coverages again. But I think this first run of KMCs is gonna like go down in history, sort of. Like you, can, it's just always yeah. gonna like set the yes. tone of the game. And it's cool to see like the players that are doing well, how the meta is evolving, even in this sort of early stage of the game. It's just super cool. And to just kind of like watch these names as we go on, because I mean, going back to old DM days, even like just to see the. What what the difference one year could make four sets later when they started running the uh, tournaments again, just to see like who shows up and and who's still around and who's still doing well. So it'll be interesting to see how this game evolves in the next year. Yeah, it's gonna be interesting to see how it evolves up till nationals uh, too. Uh, yeah, you know? we've got a month till nationals and uh, who knows what could happen. I know Team Peach plans on getting a lot of testing in. <laughs> you already know. Yeah, myself, Spencer, and CBH will all be in Seattle as well as Thunder Solden. He will be doing coverage of the event with Ryan yeah. Miller. Probably the most prestigious, you know, you go in there, you could win the whole thing, and Reddish still probably has the best seat in the house. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Crazy stuff. Super cool, can't wait. Shoutouts to everybody who won a KMC and is getting their plane ride there. And everyone who got second. And everyone who's got their invites and who will be showing up. Mm -hmm. Can't wait to Shoutouts to the LCQ, of you guys. the future LCQ winners. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that'll be happening in a month from now. It's just going to be a lot of fun, I can't wait for it, mm -hmm. so can't wait. Super exciting stuff. Hope you all enjoyed this coverage of these uh, KMCs. Yeah, just a quick rundown, just to let you know how it went. You know, yeah. In Please case you happen to miss all of it, which I don't know how you possibly could. These were amazing. Oh, they're amazing. You're running out of breath. It's so amazing. I know. <laughs> <laughs> My body can't take it. <laughs> so yeah, nationals in a month, and uh, we'll be there. So stay tuned for that, and uh, hopefully, guys, we'll see you next time. Peach. Peach.